Hello guys, welcome to Kingdom Talks. I am your host, Brahim Mansa Kalon. I'm here today with Ibuka. Yes. And um, our topic of discussion is on the kingdom. What you are going to take from this is for you to enter into the kingdom of God because that's the sole purpose of whatever we do in ministry and what we're doing right now is for people to enter into the kingdom of God as much people as possible. Introduce yourself to the audience. Let them know who you are. Yes, indeed. My name is Ibuka. I'm a student of last final year, and um, I would like to talk about the kingdom because it's very pertinent in our age, for sure. Before we even um, um, talk about kingdom, Let's define what kingdom is. So I want to hear your definition of what do you think kingdom is. So a kingdom is a territory ruled by a king or queen, ruled by a sovereign. The sovereign has absolute power over that territory, over the region, and can influence it with the will, the purpose, and their intent, bringing about a citizen of people. That is a true kingdom. A sovereign ruled by a king or queen with total domination over that territory. Bible dictionaries and commentaries refers primarily to God's kingly power. Just to add to what you have said, God's kingly power exercised over creation and people the sovereign rule, as you mentioned, sovereignty of God initiated by Christ's earthly ministry. For me personally, based on my observation, I I can paraphrase a brief description of it's it's divine sovereignty on earth mm. and heaven as well. It is God as the king reigning and ruling over the two realms He has created, not just the not just in heaven, but also here on earth, right? Yes. And it is the original and the general plan of god having dominion over whatever he has created because right now on this earth uh is shared is shared dominion right. you know because god does not fully have um influence over the earth yeah. because mm. he has given man influence over of this earth. earth so we yes. could say that uh, the earth is man's kingdom mm. we could also say that satan also has his kingdom on earth right the so kingdom the only, of darkness yeah the kingdom of darkness that's what it's called you're right so the only place that that is fully god's mm. is the kingdom of heaven mm. but earth is man's kingdom. kingdom and then you also have the kingdom of god and the kingdom of darkness mm. trying to um have a place on the kingdom of man, which is this earth, right? Dr. Miles Morrow mm. on what is kingdom. Mm. The governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his power, principle, laws, values, and mm. morals, producing a community of citizens reflecting the culture of a lifestyle of the king. Mm. Deep definition. Mm. A community of citizens mm. reflecting the culture of lifestyle of the king. And the Bible says that God is holy mm. and you and I, we should be holy, right? Mm. So let's emphasize on how are we, how should we live in the kingdom of God? Mm. Every kingdom has laws. Every kingdom has a culture. We're meant to reflect the culture, the mindset and the laws of the king. The king impacts it with his will, therefore making a citizenship that looks or reflects his image. Mm. That is how we can live in the kingdom, reflect the image and the nature of God in that so, territory. So we are, we ought to reflect him in, in, what, in what kind of way, to be more specific? In the clothing, in the mindset, in the language. Every kingdom has a language, Mm. And every citizen needs to learn the language of the king and the mindsets. Okay, interesting. Um, are there differences between the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of Christ? Mm. Or are they the same? Um, the kingdom of heaven is the 
headquarters. The kingdom of Christ, which is the kingdom of God, is an influence. So it's no more it's not physical, but it's 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 almost it's ethereal. It's it's in the nature, it's an atmosphere, it's a culture. While kingdom of heaven is the physical territory um of the kingdom of God. Really Interesting. Oh, so you're saying that um, the kingdom of of heaven is the place, the location, mm. geographical location. Yeah. Because every king has a territory, right? Exactly. Like in the human kingdom, mm. like the kingdom of Britain, it's in England, right? Right. And so God's territorial mm. place, it's in heaven, right? Yeah. That's the kingdom of heaven. Because sometimes they're used interchangeably, mm. right? The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ, but also the kingdom of heaven as well. So let's let's see this uh, references that we are made regarding um, the kingdom of of God and the kingdom of Christ. Mm. I think that's in Ephesians chapter five, verse five. I want you to read it for me. Let's see what it says. For this you know, that no homonger, no unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Wow. So 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 you see a distinction mm. the kingdom of Christ and of God. Mm. Right? Mm. And certain uh, uh vices cannot enter mm. because it's a life there's a particular lifestyle that you have to live mm. to inherit the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. Mm. So there's a reference being made here about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of, of Christ. I just wanted to draw that attention to you regarding the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ. Yes, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Let's see what it says. Revelations 11, verse 15. And the seventeenth angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. You see, even the Bible acknowledges that there are kingdoms yeah. on this earth, you know, that, that God has assigned or given to mankind, right? Mm. And the kingdoms of not just one kingdom, but kingdoms mm. of this world. Mm. And, and here we see that um, have become the kingdoms of our Lord mm. and of his mm. Christ, our Lord and mm. of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Mm. Our Lord and mm. of his Christ. So... <laughs> mm. That's a bit... Um, that's quite peculiar, to be honest. Jesus himself... Mm. What he has to say regarding the, the kingdom. kingdom. Let's, let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 43. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. Wow. So, my brother, so what's your take on this? Hmm. There's only one message. The kingdom of God. That was the purpose of Christ, not any other message. Wow. So, so we see here that um, Christ Himself talked about or mentioned the kingdom of God, mm. and the reason why He came on this earth was because of one sole purpose: mm. to preach the kingdom of God. Mm. And I like the fact that. He said that other cities, they needed to hear this message of the kingdom mm. of God that I, Jesus, have been sent to proclaim, mm. and which is the purpose of why I'm here. Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. He says, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink in you with you in my father's kingdom. Wow, what's he saying? In my father's kingdom. <laughs> but doesn't he have a kingdom himself? 
That's what I'm saying. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So, so he came to proclaim the kingdom of God, mm. and the Father now transfer the kingdom to His mm. Son. That models the human system of passing down your heir, your the kingship to your heir, which is your son. Yes, yes, because because Jesus came to preach the kingdom of God. Mm. You just mentioned my father's kingdom, yeah. right? How it says in Revelation that, um, let's see, that the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, mm. and he shall reign forever. You see that? Mm. For I say I will not drink of the, of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Mm. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 18. You see? And then, when you go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, Christ mentioned about the kingdom of heaven. Let's see. Matthew 10? Yeah. This is very interesting because he relates it to so many. So many of scripture is about the kingdom. It says, and as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's go to Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. Let's see what it says. 17 20 20 verse 21 wow now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come he answered them and said the kingdom of God does not come with observation nor would they say see here or see there for indeed the kingdom of God is within you <laughs> Mm. And then also in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, and, the, and, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Mm. So for me, I see it as Jesus Christ brought along the kingdom of God. Mm. As much as he came to preach about the kingdom of God, he brought along access to the kingdom of God. To tell people that, hey guys, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Meaning that the kingdom of God, I am, I brought the kingdom of God. Mm. And through me, you can enter. Because the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way, mm. the truth, and the light mm. or the life. Life. Yeah. life. Mm. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. Mm. And he's talking about his Father's kingdom. Mm. So if you want to enter in his father's kingdom, you have to go through him. And he has arrived. Christ is the door. He's the pathway, he medium to the kingdom, hmm. a connecting belt to the kingdom. Because the Pharisees were asking, okay, guys, um, um, <laughs> when is the kingdom of God going to come? When is it going to come? Hmm. And just not based on observation. You don't have to look at the signs to figure out when the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. Like you mentioned, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's God's influence in your life. Mm -hmm. It's God reigning in mm -hmm. you personally, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I see that two aspects, right? God personal reign in your life and God general reign. Meaning that where God is the king over all kingdoms, where God rules over all kingdoms. And now the personal one I'm talking about, God ruling individual Hmm. influencing you with his rules and regulations, with his principles to conduct your life. He called the shot in his kingdom. Not you and I, we are just citizens. We have to obey the standards of the king in order for us to live in peace and prosperity in the king's domain. Hmm. God's method is through colonization. Every kingdom colonizes. Hmm. God's purpose was colonize earth with heaven's culture. Powerful. And to bring about his will, his purposes, and extension of his kingdom. If we can go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, because this verse mentions the importance of the kingdom of God, we should be our first priority in life. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. 
let me pose this question to you, uh, Brother Abuka. What do you think? <laughs> because remember, if you read the previous uh, verses, mm. Jesus was talking about our needs, right? Like he knows that our father, he knows that our father mm. knows that we are in need of food, shelter, and clothing, right? Mm-hmm. But now he's telling us that our focus should be on something else, something mm. that is even more important than the physical needs of life. Why is that? Why did he say that? Guys, I know you're sick in clothing, you're mm-hmm. sick in shelter, you're sick in this and that, things that, are, things that pertain to the physical life. But I want to tell you the most important thing in life. Why, why is it to seek the kingdom of God first? Because in a kingdom, it's the king's prerogative or the king's responsibility to take care of his citizens. Food, clothing, water. Mm. So seek first the kingdom and access to kingdom benefits, food, clothing, water will be provided. That's why you have to seek that first. And access comes later. Remember the last prayer when mm. Jesus said, um, when we pray, we should pray like this method that he prescribed. Mm. Um, Our Father who is in heaven, mm. hallowed be your name. It's your will. Will be done. And your kingdom come mm. as it is in heaven. So he is saying that, guys, you should pray for God's kingdom to come. Mm. Because God doesn't only rule in heaven. Yes, he rules in heaven, mm. but he also wants to rule on earth mm. with the kingdom mandate in heaven. Mm. The mm. same thing that he does in the territory of heaven, he wants to apply the same in the territory of this mm. earth because he created both realms. Mm. Let your kingdom come in this earth as it is mm. in heaven. So how is it going to happen on earth as it is in heaven? Mm. Similar. So whatever happens in heaven has to be exactly the same Mm. on this earth. Because the king is one Mm. that rules both realms. Right? Mm. That's colonization. Mm. Let the will of another foreign nation, a faraway territory, be imposed on the region. That's colonization. Wow. Wow. We as believers, I think our message should be the message of the kingdom, mm. you know, because the kingdom is such a broad um, concept mm. that entails quite a lot because in, in the kingdom there's healing, in the kingdom there's peace, there's prosperity, mm. in the kingdom there's freedom, right? Mm. And the kingdom is a perfect place. It's a place where God dwells. So mm. if you're going to live in that place, it requires certain things. Right, so let's look at the requirements of entering into the kingdom. Mm. Mark, Mark chapter one, verse fifteen. See uh, the conditions of entry into the kingdom of God. Mark one, verse fifteen. Yes. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. You see, so so there are two conditions we see here, right? Mm. Number one is repentance. The other one is faith. So we also have uh, another one in John chapter 3. If you can start reading from John chapter 3, verse 6. It tells us a very important criteria to enter in the kingdom of God. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 Most assuredly I say to you Mm. Unless one is born of water and Mm. the spirit He cannot enter the kingdom of God Mm. That which is born of the flesh is flesh That which is born of the spirit is spirit The kingdom of God Jesus said The kingdom of God is not of this world Mm. The kingdom of God is not physical It's spiritual Because God is spirit Right If you're going to live where God lives You have to be spiritual you have to be like God in that in that spiritual state because it's a spiritual place, right? Mm. That's why when Jesus, um, I think when he was standing before Pilate, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And Paul also mentioned in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says that for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, reverencing the physical life. Mm. That it's, it's what? It's righteousness, mm. joy, peace in who? In the Holy Spirit. 
Mm. It's it. I think it's a state of living. It's a spiritual state of living mm. inwardly, mm. not so much of outward representation of the kingdom. Place and presence. What do what do I mean by place? Place in a sense that you mentioned that the kingdom of God, geographically speaking, it's in heaven, mm. right? That's the place, right? That's the place that one day you and I, when we die, that's the place we're gonna live, right? In heaven, mm. where God. I mean, God is everywhere. God is only presence, right? Mm. You're right, headquarters. That's that's a good word, right? Mm. So, and then his presence, in a sense that it, his presence carries everything. He carries God Himself. He carries His Word. Mm. He, he carries His instruction. Mm. He carries His peace. He carries His joy, right? Mm. In the presence of the Lord is what there's fullness of joy, right? So his presence carries everything. And then the Bible said, greater is he that is in us. And Jesus said, abide in me and I abide in you, right? And then mm. you have the fruit of the spirit, which is righteousness, that's one, joy mm. and mm. peace, right? So this is all attributes, mm. characteristics of the kingdom of mm. God, his presence in you, ruling in you, mm. right? So that is why the Bible talks about you have to be born again mm. because the kingdom of God is not natural. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual state of existence. It's a spiritual state of living mm. forever. Mm. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. What does it say? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Wow. So, so what did you take from there? It's not just enough to call someone Lord. If someone is your Lord, you obey. You're mm. totally subject to the mm. wills or the whims. Wow. So what this is saying is that if you're calling Jesus Lord, mm. you have to do the will of the king. Mm. You have to obey and you have to have total submission Mm. to his laws so you can't say that okay um jesus is king over me but you're not obedient exactly. to the king's rule and authority exactly you know every king demands obedience mm, mm. and the king actually um enact laws mm. that we have to abide by right yeah. there's legislation which is the bible is is the legal constitution constitution as most moral usually yes. will put it right exactly of the kingdom mm -hmm. right and we have to abide by the constitution of the kingdom. Think about yeah. it. Every kingdom has laws mm. and a government mm. ruled by a king. Another thing that really baffles my mind that Jesus compares uh, uh, the kingdom of God in terms of requirement, it's in Mark chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. Let's see what it says. This is very interesting. There's something that we can learn from this. Mark chapter, Mark chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them. Mm. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Wow, this is an interesting... You see, Jesus has given us the previous verses we have read. He's given us the um, the um, criteria, mm. the requirements to enter in the kingdom of God. We read repentance and faith, being born again mm. of the spirit and water, and also being obedient to his will. Mm. Now we're talking about if you're not as a little child, mm. you will by no means enter it what does that mean what's your, what's, your, what's your take on that as a little child eagerness mm. humility mm. openness to mm. learn to relearn mm. a little child is pure mm. simple mm. and open to knowledge that's mm. what it means if you're not simple if you're not open, if you're not humble as a little child, the kingdom message will not be received. And the other thing that uh, with a little child, you can shape the little child. You exactly. can shape, you know, because when when you're a grown adults, you, the, the kingdom can't really have much influence on you because yeah. you think that 
you're not in control mm. but again when when you are in a kingdom I, I, yes you're being controlled meaning rule in a positive way mm-hmm. by the king so children they're under the authority of their parents right mm. so if you are going to enter into the kingdom of god you have to be under the authority of god who is mm-hmm. the father right the privilege of being children of the kingdom of mm. god right mm-hmm. because god sees his citizens as his children mm. right we see god who's the king as our father mm. right so if you don't have that childlike faith that childlike humility and trust mm. and willing to learn to mm. be shaped mm. and molded molded mm. into the image and likeness the culture mm. And if you're grown food adult, you don't you're not going to take corrections, you're not going to take instructions. You're just going to do things your way. This is this is a powerful truth. Yeah. Indeed. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Oh my god. Rebuked. They brought children to him that he might touch them. Mm. But his disciple were in that religious spirit. Mm. So no, Jesus doesn't have time for little <laughs> children. Oh my God, mm. Jesus doesn't have time for little children. Mm. He's a busy man. Mm. He doesn't have time for little children. And Jesus was greatly displeased, displeased yeah. and said to them, "Let the little children come to me." Jesus wasn't happy with that. He wasn't happy with his disciples' decision. Why are you rebuking those who were bringing the children to me? Mm-hmm. He wasn't happy. Wow. For such is the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And if you don't behave like this little children, you will not enter into mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Let's look at the result of being part of the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And um let's go to Luke chapter 12 verse 32. This is very interesting. Being part of the kingdom of God comes with privileges and power. Mm. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hmm. Good pleasure. Good pleasure. Pleased, he's happy, he's eager, he's he's willing to share his, his presence with you. Mm. See, Ibuka, come over, come <laughs> over, stay with me. Let's chill, let's hang out, let's let's commune. Remember when God created man? Mm. When he will come in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day? God wants a family, a relationship. Mm. Another definition for me personally, I see the kingdom of God as as a big family. Mm. of God who's the father who is in charge of this big family of both the created um earthly beings mm. and the created mm. heavenly beings. Mm. It's a big family but God is the father mm. who's in charge of the family. Mm. His son Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. We can lock up and it to be locked up in heaven I'm to be you. bound in heaven. Another thing that I tell people that I've learned is that God is not going to take earth to heaven. Mm. It's heaven on earth. Not mm. earth in heaven. Man was <laughs> made for heaven. Earth was made for man. Yes, yes. We didn't fall from heaven. We were put on earth and then you see? <laughs> so 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 there's no way earth can be can be higher than the heaven. It said it said as the heavens are higher than the earth, oh god. <laughs> so are my ways higher than yours. <laughs> you were made on this earth, not in heaven. But I, I'm giving you the privilege to come up. Amen. To come up. Hmm. To come up to that place. Hmm. Where where you were never before. Hmm. You were beneath. That is why Jesus said, wow. I am above and you are beneath. Hmm. Yeah. Because he said he said is the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father who have seen God. Yeah. You are of this earth. My kingdom is not of this yeah. world. These are all claims, truth and statements yeah. by Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 verse 28 because this is very very interesting. We're talking about 
authority, right? To exercise power over other kingdoms, such as the kingdom of darkness. Let's see what March chapter 12, verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Man of God. Man, sometimes when 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 you read the Bible, read the Bible holistically. Mm. You know what I've learned in this verse? We mentioned that the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of heaven, they're pretty much the same. Mm. Now, the Bible differentiates that with the kingdom of the kingdoms of man. You have the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar who claimed that, oh, this, this is my kingdom. God said, you, you. And then you have the kingdom of darkness, right? Mm. So Jesus is saying in this verse that, guys, but if I cast out demons, and, and demons, they're servants of the kingdom of darkness. Mm. And Satan rules over the kingdom of darkness. And he wants to bring the kingdom of darkness on earth. Mm. Right? That's what he wanted to do. And God also wants to bring the kingdom of heaven and earth, which is the kingdom of light. Mm. So you have two kingdoms fighting for the kingdom of the earth. Mm. But the Bible says that in Revelation, that Jesus is going to triumph over the kingdoms of the world. He's going to bring all of them to the kingdom mm. of Christ, of the Lord and of his Christ. Mm. So we see here that if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Mm. We talk about kingdom by definition is colonization, rulership, leadership, influence, right? Mm. When you are possessed, you are possessed by another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. When you are possessed by demons, they influence your life. They control your life, mm. your mind, your emotion. You understand? Mm. They will tell you what to do and you will do. But now Jesus said, if I cast out this other kingdom of darkness, this spirit, this demon, who are representative servants of the kingdom of darkness, and I cast them out by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. It replaces it with the kingdom of God. Mm. Because when you are possessed, you are possessed with agents of the kingdom of darkness. Mm. When Jesus cast them out, now you have the kingdom of heaven. And then the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who? The spirit of God. You see? Why deliverance is important? The kingdom message is very powerful because it, 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 it determines our final destination in life. Mm. It's either your final destination will be in the kingdom of heaven with God forever, or your final destination will be with Satan, the kingdom of darkness and hell forever. Mm. Right? That was why Jesus was saying that, guys, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness because that will be your final destination, either in heaven or in hell. When, when you are under the bondage of the enemy, you are under a kingdom because kingdom is influence. Mm. Whatever the king does affects you. Whatever laws the king imposes affects you. So whatever practices that the practice in the kingdom of darkness affects you, mm. you've been possessed. Of God is very holistic. With, with it comes healing. With the kingdom of God comes deliverance, mm. provision, peace, and prosperity. That is why uh, Paul said the kingdom of God is not just a, it's not eating or drinking, but righteousness, joy, peace, and other stuff like freedom. Because the Bible said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And Jesus talked about the words of the kingdom. If you understand the words of the kingdom, right? Mm. He said that by the spirit of God, surely, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Another kingdom. Mm. The kingdom of God replaces the kingdom of darkness. Remember Jesus said that the light has come, but darkness could not comprehend it. Hey! And when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. You see, it's all about kingdom. Mm. The kingdom of man, the kingdom of darkness, and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. Mm. Everybody wants control. Mm. Power. Everybody wants power. Revelation sums up this power struggle. 
that every knee shall bow. Every oh my God, every tongue will confess that Jesus is who? Mm. It's Lord. Mm. Let, let's read that verse. God has highly exalted him. Oh my God. Above every other name. Mm. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Mm. Of those in heaven, of those on earth, heaven and earth. The two realms that we're talking about. That God created. Why won't you bow to your creator? <laughs> you want, you want, you want, <laughs> you God. <laughs> Even under the earth. Oh my God, that's the realm of darkness. Hell. Mm-hmm. Ibuka. <laughs> Three realms. Because I know sometimes we talk about heaven and earth, mm. but mm. there are three realms. Heaven, earth, and under mm. the earth, which is hell. Mm. Earth is just the middle ground <laughs> where people have to decide, I want to spend my eternity in heaven or I want to spend mm. my eternity in hell. Yeah. But God's original plan, hell was not in it. But because of rebellion, the original plan that God had was heaven and earth. Whatever he does in heaven should be on earth. But because of Satan's rebellion, there's a place destined for him. And those who choose not to believe in Jesus will end up in that rebellious place, a place of darkness where God is not present. Mm. God, oh my God. That's what the Bible said. I will create a new earth and a new heaven. Hell is not mentioned Mm -mm. because that was never in the original plan of God. God created the heavens and the, look what it says mm. in Genesis. <laughs> in the beginning, what did he create? God created the heavens and the earth. Did he, oh my God, did he create hell? No. Hell is a place where God doesn't exist. No. The new, the, the heaven is where God is. It's geographical location. Mm. Heaven is where God is and God also wants to come back and take his place on earth because he created this earth. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Mm. Every tongue should confess mm. that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh my God. He came to please the Father and then the Father hand over everything to him. Mm. All power belongs to me. All authority belongs to me. <laughs> every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord, King. It's Lord, King. <laughs> Man of God. That means Jesus is the glory of God. I'm telling you. Uh, Luke 18, 29 and 30. Luke 18, 29 and 30. So he said to them, as shortly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents, brothers, wife, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Wow. So, so the kingdom of God is not cheap. To enter it is not cheap, Iboka. Mm. It comes with a cost. It comes with a price. And that is the blood of Jesus mm. for you and I to have access in God's domain. Jesus paid it. His blood, sacrifice. Why would you choose? The kingdom. If you leave everything, Jesus already sacrificed just for you to have access with his blood. Now he's saying that if you have left everything for the sake of the kingdom, mm. He said you'll be blessed here on this earth and even in eternity. Two blessings. Oh my God. Most of his parables were about the kingdom, saying that guys, can the kingdom of God is like a man who finds a treasure mm. who sell everything to possess. This verse that you're reading came from an account of the rich young ruler hmm. when Jesus Christ tested him to go and sell everything and follow him. And then Peter asked him, but master, we have left everything. Mm. When he said it would be hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Remember? Yeah. It would be hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. But he said at the end, but with God, all things are what? All things are possible. Most people want to go to heaven, mm. but they don't care about the king. You, it's like, okay, you cannot, you cannot enter my house if you don't know me. Mm. I won't let you in. 
you have to know me first before you enter into mm. my house. That is what domain. Mm. You can't just enter into the heaven without the Father. The Son has come to reveal his daddy to us. So when he said, if you see me, I've seen the Father. If he, and then the Father confirmed that this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. You need to be in the right standing. Righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> and if you, people, oh, I just want to go to heaven. I don't even care about God. I don't even care about the King. Mm. No. You have to care about the king. You have to believe in the king. You have to believe in the king's son. Mm. You have to listen to him. You have to have a relationship with him. That's the word. Because you're not just going there just to sit down that you don't have nothing to do with God. Mm. You don't have you're not you're not going to worship him. That you just there just just on your own. No, it's not like that. You are there for one purpose. For God, who is mm. the king. When you have a good relationship with the king, you enjoy his domain. Yeah. It's like we want we want the blessings, but we don't want the bless. <laughs> it's like you want the girl, you, you want sex from the girl, but you don't you don't like mm. the girl. Mm. What's the point? You think God is stupid? It's like you coming into my life, you just want to take from me, but you don't you don't really want to get to, you don't want to get to know me mm. as a friend, as as a person. Take all of me holistically, whatever I am that makes who I am, be involved. So that's why this statement came about. You can't live in the king's domain if you don't believe in the king, mm. have a relationship with the king, mm. and live according to the right standards of the king in order to live in the cultural lifestyle of mm. his domain. Mm. What is culture? It consists of language, music, arts, sports, entertainment, everything that makes up the society. Kingdom life is important. Kingdom culture needs to be reflected because the king has a culture. We as his children need to impart that in our territory, colonize earth with his will, and be ambassadors of Christ. I really want to emphasize on how important character is when it comes to entering into the kingdom of God. Mm. And the reason is, you know, there's a saying that when you go to Rome, do what the Romans do, mm. right? Mm. So when you go to heaven, <laughs> do what the heavens do. <laughs> heaven do what the angels do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to heavens, when you go to heaven, do what the angels do. What do they do? They are pure. They are they are holy. Mm. They are righteous. They, they worship God. Mm. So because heaven is not like earth. No, you, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't take earth to heaven. You don't. You don't mm. take earth to heaven. You don't take the flesh to heaven. You have to drop the flesh. Spirit to the spirits to flesh. Yeah, you don't. You know? So you don't you don't take the canality to a place of holiness. Mm -mm. You don't you don't you don't do that. That is why you have to be born again. You have to be born again. You see? It's 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 because <laughs> there's no dust. Mm. There's no flesh. Heaven heaven is spiritual. Born of what? Of water mm. and spirit. Mm hmm because God is spirit. And then the Bible talks about that in Ephesians that for, for, for this you know that no fornicator, these are all fleshly lifestyle, way of living, right? Mm -hmm. Unclean person or covetous man. These vices, you cannot carry them in the kingdom of Christ and God. Mm. That is why Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. And Paul said the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. In what? In the Holy Spirit. Mm. You see, two things here. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the righteousness, the right standing of God, Jesus, his righteousness has been imputed in us. When we live according to the Holy Spirit, his fruit will manifest in us. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is righteousness. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit carries the characteristics of God. It carries the attributes of God. Mm. Which includes righteousness, joy, and peace. Mm. So, character is an essential criterion. Because, because that's how you're going to be living in the kingdom. Mm. How else are you going to be living? <laughs> Indeed. How else are you going to be living? Be holy for I'm holy. That's why God, you see, God is preparing you and I in a way that when we get to heaven, we can easily conform 
That is why the Bible said, do not be conformed to this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. The way you think, think heavenly. He said, set your mind, your heart on the things above. No, on the things beneath. Yeah. The focus is on heaven, heaven lifestyle. Mm. God wants to bring it down. It's a new, it's near, it's not far away. It's in you. Christ brought it. And, and, the, and, and the words that we read in the Bible talks about the kingdom of God. If you understand the words of the kingdom. Let's, 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 let's go to this. this. This thing just came to mind. I hear the power of the sower. Mm. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Mm. Oh. oh my God. You see? He said, oh my God. He said, when anyone hears the word of what? The of the kingdom. kingdom and does not understand it, immediately the wicked one comes and mm. takes away. Because when you make a decision that, ah, this kingdom message makes mm. sense. If I believe, if I repent, if I believe, if I become mm. born again, if I act like a little child, mm. if I obey his will, I can enter his, into his kingdom. Mm. If you don't understand that, Satan will come and snatch it away from you. But if you understand, you will give your life to Christ. Yeah. You will sell everything that you have and go and buy. Mm. You do whatever it takes to enter into it's the kingdom, kingdom of God. Yeah. You build yourself upon that work. The work is the kingdom. Foundation is the kingdom. Mm. And just like the mustard seed, it's so little, but it grows. I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for your kingdom. Thank you for the message. You came to bring about the kingdom, Lord. Your rulership, your reign. Let your will be done on earth as it yes, is in Lord. heaven, Lord. Let your people submit to you in obedience. Let us be counted worthy, Lord. Yes, Lord. Worthy to be in your kingdom, worthy to worship you, worthy to be in your courts. Let us come with thanksgiving and praise that such a great honor has been bestowed upon us. Yes, Lord. Lord, anyone hearing this message, let the kingdom message not be snatched in from the heart of God. Yes, Lord. Anyone. Let it lay in good soil. Yes, Lord. Let it germinate, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bring about the righteousness. Yes, Lord. Bring about peace. Yes, Lord. Bring about patience. Yes, Lord. Bring about justice. Oh God, yes, Lord. Of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. Lord, we rely on you, Lord. You are our King, Father. We submit to your laws, your yes, statutes. Lord. Lord, we depend on you for our sustenance. Yes, Lord. For our water, for our food, for our clothing. He said, do yes, not Lord. seek those things, but seek ye first the kingdom. Yes, Lord. We seek you, Lord. You're the most important thing to us. Yes, Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Yes, Lord. You are the king. Yes, Lord. Reign in justice and righteousness. Yes, Lord. Those are the foundations of your tongue, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.